much of an introduction because she's so awesome and she serves beautifully in our church, but she is the coordinator of Cherish, so let's enjoy what the Lord has placed on her heart. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Phew, what a birthday blessing we had this morning. Yes. And I just blessed the two of you um, to walk into what God has already prepared for you. It's not something that you need to go and search for, and that is my blessing on you. So like you said, it's my pleasure to talk to you a little bit this morning. And as I prayed about this word, asking God, what specifically would he like me to say to you? Because um, usually I have a word long before the time. And I just couldn't get a specific scripture or word or theme. And I thought, God, what is happening here? And suddenly it dawned on me that what is happening at the moment in my life? And the one thing that is um, really taking me so much deeper and deeper is um, talking to God and hearing his voice. And that's something that um, I've been a Christian for many years. Um, I remember as a little girl sitting on my bed, reading my Bible alone. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, but I remember from a very small age, I was really searching the word. But um, I gave my heart to um, Jesus, I think, multiple times as a little girl. <laughs> and you know what? I don't know if you recognize it, but in my son as well now, um, he would just tell me, and we will read a scripture, and he's nine now. So I think he has already given, I said the other day, we were speaking to him, and he's given his life to Jesus three times. He said, no, mommy, four times. I said, well done, <laughs> Mom. But what does that say? It, um, as we grow up, and I think in culture, and I really needed to think about it, is that we always, um, out of a, and I say it with a lot of, um, yeah, that we might have fear in our heart that I don't want to be left out going to heaven that I want to be there, um, that it's not really in a relationship of knowing because that he loves me so much. And that is something I grew up in, and I just want to give you a little bit of the theme today that I want to talk about is a way to see the beauty of God's love for you. And the only way I realized is that I needed to make sure that I can really receive what God says about me and who he is. It couldn't be a one-way conversation, and for many years it was. I prayed a lot, and I know the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, but I didn't intentionally go to Him and say, God, I want to speak face to face with you, and I want to hear your heart for me. And I lay everything down, and then to stop and say, God, what did, what did you say? So this was my experience that I wanted to, uh, to share with you. So as I grew up, there was really a spirit of performance that I adopted. And it was um, how my father grew up as well, I think in many ways. And I think for me as well, in terms of how I, with my son, I need to guide myself against it. We want the best for our children. We want to encourage them without a place of, uh, when you perform, there is love. Because that is a big thing that I need to struggle with. And I built huge walls around myself. Ladies, I looked very different 20 years ago. And I'm now 57. So for you to, and then the, um, 10 years ago, a little bit more than 10 years ago, I went for my first soul blood session. And um, I knew God. I really walked with Him. But in that first session, I can tell you, I broke down that pretty wall. In a way that it was not a, a how do we talk, it's not a pretty cry. It's an ugly cry almost. But coming out of it, the joy that he replaced what, because he so gently came and showed me this wall that I had. And when he showed me, and, I, and Jesus said, you know what? You don't need this wall anymore. I am enough for you. And I still get goosebumps now as I stand here. And when that, and I, and I asked Jesus, part of that facilitation was, um, and Belinda still did mine that first time. And um, asked Jesus, what does it give you to break down this wall? Are you ready? And the Holy Spirit just said, yes, you are ready. Jesus is enough. And I said, Jesus, come to me to break down this wall. And I've been through many sessions, and he is such a creative God. He gives people different things of how to open himself up in many ways. It is brilliant and beautiful to see. But in that moment, when I said, Jesus, come and break down this wall, because it was a huge wall, like this very big, the ground opened and this wall fell in with such in an instant. It was in the ground. And 
the only thing that could be seen is the dust rolling up. I remember it to this day because it was the biggest miracle that happened in my life because of where I came from and how I built these walls, managing people and not letting them in, not really um, receiving love as well. Because as you protect yourself, you also keep people from loving you and you can't really love them as well. But as I walked out where that wall came down, showed me was a lot of people, a lot of people were smiling in my face. People, because I was scared of people. That was part of it. To Because I knew to perform, can I ever be enough to, to step into everything? And the beauty was to see these people wanting to embrace me, loving me, smiling at me. So still today, if I go into any place and I feel, I just see smiling faces. And I know God has prepared their heart to perform me. So um, let me begin at the first verse. verse. So this is the scripture that God gave me. And it became so real to me, ladies, amazingly real. Matthew 5, verse 16 in the message. Keep open up. Be generous with your life. Opening By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up to God, our generous Father in heaven. And I saw this. In such a quick span of time after this miracle happened, as I opened up to people, first in a working environment, um, and just being me, and allowing him to tell me when to say what, and how to courageously sometimes say something, he opened time for me. And I connected with people from different levels. That was just a miracle. People will, that knew me, three walls, would say, this is my person. I've heard it. And this is a different person. So God really came and did um, a true miracle in me. Um, for me, I wanted to tell you just a little bit about soul care. And this is something that I think um, the Spirit then prompted in me to tell you what does it mean for me and what actually happens in a session like that. Because it's a gift to yourself. And I can tell you every year, we do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, if there's a blessing as you, as you pray with somebody that can facilitate you through um, things that happen in your life. Because life happens. You cannot, um, you know, um, as you go through life, there's new things that trigger. Something happens in your life and suddenly you react in a way that you don't understand why is it happening. It might be of a wound or something that happened when you were small that's now triggering you. And you need to ask God, God, what is this? Why do I have this reaction? Why am I, I need to be able to deal with it? And for soul care, it's all about the conversation with God and to hear what he said. So discover the truth about who God is for you personally, not just who the God is and how, uh, discovers how he values you. How does he see you? Those two things. Because as we grow up, we start building thoughts as in how our whole life is being, um, guided by how we think about ourselves, about God, and about people. So in this session of soul care, you come and um, open up and the Holy Spirit shows you what are the lies that you believe about yourself, about God. And the best part is, and that's that two-way conversation, He comes and replaces with the truth of what He says, and you have a new perspective. So the role of the relationship in this situation is extremely important. The most important people in your life, and your father and your mother, your husband, your wife, your sisters, your brothers, <coughs> close friends, are the people that actually speaks deeply into your soul and your heart. And you might know it sometimes, sometimes it happens without you knowing it, but there is lies sometimes established without them wanting to do wrong to you. There's some lies coming and we take this as this is how the father heart is, how the mother heart is, how our friends are. So it's extremely important. And I was reminded about Luke 10, um, 27 and the Amplified. And he replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. To be able to do that, you need to spend that quality time with God that, Honest time 
where the veil is removed, where you come face to face with Father God here, who is our Papa, who is Jesus, and who is the Holy Spirit. And it's a choice. We have to make a choice to say, God, I step into this conversation now, which I make the time to speak to you. And as you come close to him, he will be found. James tells us that, that it is not maybe, but it's our choice to step into that close bond with him. So I wanted, as I came to me, I wanted to, this has really been very interesting for me, and it's such a truth. If you haven't read this book about Mike uh, Beagle, um, please do. Rick introduced it the first time to us. And for me, it makes so much sense. We have legitimate needs. Often we think, God, why do I want this thing? Or what, what, why do I feel this way? It cannot be godly. What is wrong with me? How can I get away with it? Or away from it? We have legitimate needs. And if it doesn't get um, satisfied, then often it goes into a place where it's unhealthy. But seven longings of the human heart, um, the assurance that we are enjoyed by God, to be fascinated. Who wants to be fascinated? God created us that way. To be beautiful. We want to feel beautiful. To be great. For intimacy without shame. And that was that wall that I had. I want to be intimate with people without feeling that I'm so hard or there's something. Um, to be wholehearted and passionate. Um, to make a deep and lasting impact. And that last one, with an, um, the work and corporate environment, money is not a long lasting motivator. People say your oh, money is a short term. The long term motivator is that lasting, that lasting impact is that you have meaning. Your life has meaning and where you bring it. So coming back to soul care, what happens? Um, there's three needs really as a human, and it is in body, soul, and spirit. The body <coughs> is represented by the father. And so uh, God um, presents himself as Father, Jesus, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because on earth, in um, we have the Father, the Mother, and we have our friends, our siblings. So as a father, identity, a father in the home needs to establish the identity of children. It's not the mother's job, it's the father's job. It's the father figure to have identity, to have value. Speak over your children as a father. Bless them, that's why the father blessed the children. Uh, protection and provision. So if there's something triggering you that I'm not sure if I will be provided for, I'm uncertain. My identity in who I am, there's some father wound that you picked up on this earth and it can reflect on your relationship with God the Father. So second part is the soul, siblings, friends, companionship, communication. Jesus is our friend. He is our savior, but he takes our hands and he goes to journey with us. He is our mother. Um, spirit is the mother. So if you have a mother wound, and, um, it, it's not to say that they want to think they, they might have been busy full time working and they wasn't trying to nourish or whatever the situation might be. Comfort, nurture, and teaching. That is the Holy Spirit in for us. And if that's lacked in your life, it is difficult for you to step into a place to think that Holy Spirit would be that for you. Because you have a reference to what has happened on earth. So words and lies get established in our heart, which keeping us away from having an honest conversation and an open conversation and a trust relationship with the, um, the Father God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So this is just a way of how do we then see the world? Shape uh, my identity and behavior, the lenses through which I see God then is through my relationships that I've had here on earth and still have it. Um, so it's very from the outside in. Whatever I have experienced, this is what I project now on the Father in. So Father, authority figure, if there was things that's not how it should be, I reflect that on my Father. And I had a huge thing that I needed to work through that. And if that red flag goes up, I know. Because I was concerned about, Father, will I be provided for? Will I, will I be okay? For me, that was a big lack. 
and I remember so good, our father is so good, the one time and I've been through this conversation with him and um, the question came up, is there any lie that I still believe about Papa, about my father? And I said, yes, Papa, I'm not sure about my Christian. And he looked at me and he says, are you serious? And I laughed and he said to me, I've been through this so often with you, my daughter. Are you serious? We don't have to ask this question ever again. And that is the thing that we need to, and to bring it before the Father. Just, Jesus um, is just so that one. So the same from the outside in. Brothers, sisters, friends, this really hurt me. I cannot see Jesus as a friend. Um, Holy Spirit, nurturing. I cannot connect with the Holy Spirit if I feel there was a lack and I can really go and sit and make the time and be taught and be nurtured. So what we need to do is first go and repair this relationship in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit does that for us. If we make the time to spend the time with Him and say, Father, is there a lot that I believe about you? Who do I need to forgive? What is there things of my Father that I need to forgive? And it could be a perception. It could be my perception. It's not that it might have happened. But this a perception is as good as real. And the same for Jesus. What lie do I believe? about you. Who do I forgive? Forgiveness, ladies, are the root of that relationship needs to be repaired. If you know there's something that you carry a hurt, you forgive. It is for you to be set free. There's things happening over that person as well where you speak and it doesn't make it right, but when you forgive, it's a miracle that happens. I've seen it so often. And then you can see Jesus for who you truly Save that now and you can live that into the next relationship without building a wall, protecting myself because I've been hurt by this, this and this. I'm going to be very careful of you. No, Jesus, you are enough to protect me. I'm stepping in and you are going to help me set the boundaries. You are going to forgive me. Holy Spirit as well, nurturing. Let's go to the next one, ladies. So then if we look at Micah 6, 8, and it's amazing how God has been speaking about this scripture to me personally in the last two weeks. And yesterday when I put these slides together and I saw this last um, slide um, that Belinda put together on the soul care side, it is a scripture in Micah 6, 8, which the Father is act justly. Remember what he said, provision, the identity, act justly as you walk. God, what does God expect of us? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, except to be just, act justly, and to love, and to diligently practice kindness and compassion, and to walk humbly with your God, setting aside overblown sense of importance and righteousness. So if we look at acting justly, the Father, Jesus, now we come from a place of who is the Father? He is just, he is love, and we step into that as he gives us that, that knowledge. Um, Jesus, love mercy. Yes, things go wrong, but how do you deal with it? You don't shy away from it and not address it, but you address it in love. Because this is who we are. Out of God, God is love. We love, uh, uh, love mercy. And then lastly, walk humbly before God. And that is something I think that um, if you go into the, the Amplifier, um, I think even in the NIV, it talks about prudently. What does that mean, to be prudently humble? And I went and I looked into um, uh, further into that word meaning. It is to take care of today with a thought of tomorrow. We don't just act in the moment. We think of what could be the consequences of tomorrow to really act humbly. So Papa loves me for just being me. This is now me saying, this is what I needed to realize. There's nothing, uh, because I was created in his image. That's why he loves me. He loves me completely because he made me in his image and he looks at me through Jesus. And there's nothing I can do that will make him love me more. So why am I jumping through all the hoops? I must live from a place and I heard this which is so beautiful. I need to live from a place of pleasure, not a place of pressure. 
If you remember anything today, remember that, because that is my new motto. We have lots of things to do, and we need to, like, um, uh, uh, you know, Lee was saying this morning, you need to work hard, work hard, do what you need to do, but don't dip into that place as we look at the seven longings of the human heart. Now, those are longings, but what is the risk to be great? We can dip into a place where it's not self-righteous, I'm doing too much, I am doing so much because I'm getting the reward on this, the recognition, and my family is suffering. Where is that place where I am being faithful with what is in my hands, but I'm not dipping into an unhealthy place? And that's exactly it. Live from a place of pleasure, enjoying it. What has God placed in you? What's your passion, your talent? Bring it with absolute um, passion to where you are working, where you are connecting with friends. But be sure that it's not from a place of pressure. I have to do this. God, I'm doing this out of the pleasure of my heart. I'm helping. I've got the skills. You've given me the place to walk, and you've prepared it. Show me if I walk on a place where you're not prepared at all. Because then it's stepping into pressure. Because it's not what is prepared for you. And Jesus said, my burden is light. So if your burden starts getting heavy, there's a hard thing that's going wrong, and you're stepping into pressure, not out of pleasure. So this is also something that's really spoken to me so much, um, ladies, in the last few weeks, is uh, Psalm 100. And actually, it was this word, 23 to 24, was the first verse that God gave me in 2021 when I spent time with him. And I want to start with the last few verses. We got David writes, oh God, I invite you, search your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Um, put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. What am I worrying about? See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on and lead me back to your glorious and everlasting way. The path that brings me back to you. So this is the end, the last two verses of Psalm 100. So David comes to the end, but what is the first part? You know it. Is that that uh, psalm is when David writes how beautifully and wonderfully God has made me, us, and he is like, um, he's such a great poet, but he's describing it, how beautiful you are made. Verses 17 to 18, every single moment you are thinking of me, um, you're, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains in the sand on every shore. <laughs> Even when I awake every morning, you still be with me. And is that not goosebumps? That is the God that we serve. And he, and he writes that whole um, song of how wonderfully God has made him. But at the end, he catches himself to say, God, Search my heart and see if there's any anxious thoughts. Because I need to reset my brain every day, every moment. That your thoughts are beautiful about me. You've created me for this. You've created me for your pleasure. I am yours. But why am I moving my thoughts to a place where I'm struggling? That I have these anxious thoughts I need to know it. I think I've said everything that I wanted to say, um, but what I really want to um, read to you is something that I've read in How God Speaks. It is a beautiful devotion, and I would like to read it before we go um, and into a song we dance from Ben Hall. I don't know if you know that song. It was first introduced to me when um, the youth group of Bethel sang it, and Bright Ones, beautiful CD. Very funky, your children will love it. Um, but then it, it was also sang by Bethel. Um, and I would love us to, to really uh, just connect with God as we sing that song. But before that, I would like you to close your eyes and I want to read something from Papa's heart to you. Play that music within you, my darling. The way you hear me is unlike anyone else. The way I shape you, move you, wrap my arms around you, you are my dance partner. You are the one I choose. You are the one I cannot resist and to whom I come running. I run into your touch. I hear the music, the rushing water, 
the rustle of grass. There's a place we dance, there is a sky sun. Our floor, our clearing, amidst busyness and worry. I clear away doubt and shadow. I clear away trepidation and sorrow. I clear away despair and self-content. I clear away a comparison and envy. I clear away disease of the heart, the kind that makes you pull away from me. I write notes no one before has heard. I am the orchestra, each instrument the voice of every song. I sing for you. I dance with you. I feel the swell of every beat, each rise and fall. It is not mysterious to me why you are precious, beautiful, captivating, stunning, altogether so bright. You bear my image, your light, a room, because you bear my fragrance, my praise, my voice. Yes, I hear my voice in you. Sing now, daughter, the song I teach you to sing, the one I've already taught you. You've gotten some notes, and some you have yet to discover. Come now, the orchestra is waiting. Your music needs to be sung. And that is my prayer also over you, that you'll really hear the Father saying this over you, and that for you to sing your song, which is already loved in your life.